It's Friday, and welcome to another behind the scenes video. That's my justification for not spending the time to make these look better. I'm Tom Merritt, <laughs> and this is the Daily Tech News Show. As you can tell, i got a couple of guests with me today. It's Friday, so joining me again is Len Peralta to uh, draw the stories for us. How, how's it going, Len? It's going awesome, Tom. I'm glad to be here, and um, it's going to be fun. I always have a great time when I do this. So. Okay, good dry run, because you're going to have to do it again when I actually start the audio recording. <laughs> uh, Nicole Lee from Engadget is also with us. Are you are you alive after CES, Nicole? Uh, barely. I am barely alive. Okay. I, 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 think, I think I am. She's the $6 million <laughs> reporter, a woman barely alive. Barely, barely. We can rebuild barely. her. <laughs> All right. I've been here a week. It's insane. You live at CES, is what you're saying. I live I know here. that feeling. I live yeah. here. <laughs> All right. Uh, give, me a, give me a couple seconds of quiet, and then we're going to start the show. You ready? This is the Daily Tech News Show for Friday, January 10th, 2014. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me today, because it's Friday and he's back again, Mr. Len Peralta will be illustrating the episode. Uh, how's it going, Len? It's going awesome, Tom. It's always a good time uh, to show up on Fridays. I really look forward to doing the show, and I'm looking forward to drawing some cool stuff. Wow, he even said the same thing when I, I, he didn't have to earlier before we started the episode. Uh, if you're an audio listener and you're like, well, he's drawing the show, how am I going to see that? You go to lenperaltastore.com. Do I have that right? Lenperaltastore.com? Yes, and he'll, he'll have the prints available. You can just look at them there. You can buy a print as well. Also joining us to discuss the stories uh, fresh. Well, you're not even out of CES yet, but CES is winding down. Nicole Lee, associate editor from Engadget. Thanks for joining us, Nicole. Not a problem. Yes, it is still, I am still here on the ground uh <laughs> <laughs> literally around. lying on the ground <laughs> lying on the ground all uh, right yeah it's uh you know last days of ces so hopefully everything's gonna go well but yeah well uh good to, good thing to know is that um in gadget awarded the best of ces awards we're going to talk about one of those and a few other things that nicole saw at ces but let's start by taking a look at the headlines Engadget awarded the Oculus Rift VR prototype Crystal Cove the official Best of CES award. The new version of the Rift reduces latency to 30 to 40 milliseconds and, according to reports, pretty much eliminates motion blur from the 1080p display. A ton of new sensors on the outside of the headset are tracked by an external camera, which means the Rift can now track the position of your body as well as your head. Still no release date, but Oculus says they're shooting for a ballpark retail price of around 300 bucks. Recode reports the U.S. Supreme Court has granted writ of certiorari to the case ABC Inc. et al. versus Aereo Inc. Yeah, that's right. And interestingly, Justice Alito took no part in the consideration of that decision. Aereo provides access to micro antenna, allowing subscribers to get over the air channels via the internet. Broadcast networks believe this is an unauthorized rebroadcast, and so far, Aereo has won the lower court decisions, but the Supreme Court's going to weigh in, and they could do it as early as this summer. Reuters reports the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit has upheld a decision by the International Trade Commission in April that Apple did not violate a patent held by Google's Motorola. Motorola Mobility accused Apple in 2010 of infringing on six of its patents, including one that reduces signal noise and the one that stops the buttons from being pressed when it knocks against your cheek. The Verge passes along that Facebook has announced it will phase out its sponsored stories ad units as of April 9th. Now, Facebook announced back in June they were going to get rid of sponsored stories, but it did not, did not give an end date at that time. Sponsored stories, if you don't remember, let companies pay to promote your actions in your friend's news feed. I don't think they gave you any money for it, though. For instance, if you checked into a coffee shop, the shop could pay to have your check-in show up as an advertisement. Facebook did have to pay something, though. They agreed to pay $20 million to settle a class action lawsuit brought against them because of sponsored stories. And hey, remember that Target breach from December? The one that affected 70 million customers, involved credit and debit data, as well as pins? Well, GigaOM reports Target has one more thing to add to that list. Certain guest information was also taken. What information, you may ask? Well, Target thinks it may have included names, mailing addresses, phone numbers, or email addresses, although they're pretty sure it's partial in nature. Comforting. Now for some news from you. 
Clem Rowe submitted this story to dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. You can go do that, too, and vote on the stories as well. Tech Dirt reports U.S. Senator Patrick Leahy is using the aforementioned Target hack as an excuse to slip a little language into the reintroduced Personal Privacy and Security Act. That's the act that would expand the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. A lot of people wanted to do the opposite. The change in language would punish anyone who conspires or attempts to commit an offense as if they had actually completed it. So if I say something like, hey guys, let's figure out how to break into the bank's website, even if it's just meant as an educational exercise, I would be punished under the law as if I had actually broken into the bank's website. Subreddit contributor Slash Top pointed us to this TechCrunch article about a new app called Fobo. I'm interested in this. It's a way to sell used consumer electronics. The app launched in San Francisco today and guarantees a minimum price for any item you attempt to sell while still running a short auction to try to get you a better price. If nobody bids within 97 minutes of posting, uh, Fobo will buy the items themselves. Buyers prepay, so when they pick it up from the seller, there's no haggling or hassling or any of that sort of thing, and the seller sets the schedule. And SP Sheridan sent in a Business Insider post about GHash.io, the world's largest collective of Bitcoin miners, which now controls 42% of the computer processing power used to mine bitcoins. If the collective were to rise above 50%, it could threaten the integrity of Bitcoin's transaction confirmation system, since the collective could essentially confirm all the transactions with themselves. Uh, Ghash released a statement saying they would take all precautions to prevent reaching the 51% mark. And that's a look at the headlines. Nicole, what do you think of the news yeah. today? Um, Today I have to I have to admit it's good to hear news that's not CS related. Yeah, was that a relief? something else going on outside of Vegas? <laughs> it's because like a breath of fresh been, air. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's uh, unfortunately turn to CES. Not unfortunately though. I really like this Oculus Rift <laughs> Crystal Cove. Uh, we heard all the details about it already here on, in the headlines. Mm -hmm. But you had a meeting with Oculus today. Did you get a chance to try it? Yes, absolutely. And um, you know. I have to admit, um, I'm not being a, a, a complete gamer myself. I was a little bit skeptical about it, but I put it on. I put it on the sensors, and uh, these, I guess, I guess, extra sensors, and there was this camera component to it as well, that um, it tracks your entire body movements. This is something called positional tracking. So it's not just you know turning your head left and right. It's if you can bend down, you can sort of bend your torso down to look at something on the ground. You can sort of um, you know. So it's a whole it's 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 a whole body movement, and I think that really makes things really interesting. Um, sort of changes the the gaming aspect a little bit. Well, and I know when when I tried it, it was very early days, and you yes. know I was walking around the famous Venetian palazzo or whatever <laughs> whatever yes. it was uh, that yeah. they had, and there was a mm -hmm. little bit of weirdness where if I if you know if I tried to look around a corner, and that was the big thing I saw in yes. the demos. Absolutely, uh, you couldn't really do that, right? No, and this one you could that, that you could sort of look around corners. Um, the game that they tested me with was the Valkyrie, which is a a, a, a flight sim, and it was really fun where I could just look at a target just just straight up looking at it, and that itself will lock the target. I didn't even have to press anything or anything. I was just oh, looking at cool. it. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Um, Although so you have to be like careful that, with that, that I suppose. I know. <laughs> that's true. Just looking at things will trigger things. But um, you know, these, these new sensors they have is really, really, really interesting. I, I'll be very excited to see what they – because this is just a prototype. You know, It would be very interesting to me to see what they make out of it. And the motion blur, you can attest to that, it sounds like. They're, they're yeah. almost absent? Almost absent. And I think um, almost. maybe almost absent. I, there's something about, um, I can't remember what they said, about, about, about <laughs> I can't remember exactly what they said, the, the, the technical term behind it. But um, Oh, was it you, uh, low persistence? Yes, low persistence. Exactly right. So I was sort of checking my head just to see if it, if it, um, if it blurred more or anything like that. And... Just shaking your head does not does not change the the, the, the sharpness of it. Like it's still really it's still very sharp. It's like 1080p um, OLED display, so it's very crisp. It's very sharp, and I would almost say that the difference between this and last year's model is like night and day. It's almost it's almost a different thing. It's what? so different. It's so much better. And that's it's what different. I think is interesting about what. Oculus is doing, and they're very wisely not giving any release dates. I thought it was kind of bold for them to be out there going, they're around 300 bucks, because who knows? 
uh, where they'll end up having to price it at. Yes. But I, I think it's smart for them to roll it out and say, look, this is what it does. We're going to be open about that. And then when we mm -hmm. have an improvement, we're going to give you that and we're going to be open about it. And the fact that they're saying, no, this is not the final. We're not even close to the final yet. Makes me more excited because I feel like I'm getting to watch it develop instead of having it just in rumors and, and whispers until it finally is unveiled <laughs> in its full form. I think that's really working for them. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, um, everyone thinks, oh, you know, VR is kind of a niche thing, but you have to remember, this is not, this is, this is not, this does not just have uses in gaming. Um, NASA is interested in this. The automotive industry is interested in this. Movie theaters, like the movie experiences in like amusement parks are really interested in this. So it's not just like one field. I think that the, 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 the new technology behind this new Oculus Rift really expands its possibilities. All right, uh, let's talk about a couple of the other things that, that you saw. One, you wrote up the article about the Mophie Space Pack. Uh, I yeah. know Mike Hurley we had on the show yesterday was a big fan of this as well. It doubles mm -hmm. the battery life of your iPhone 5 or 5S like most Mophies, but it also doubles the storage capacity. Yes. But explain how it works because it doesn't exactly just give you Un, unlimited storage, or, or not unlimited, but you know, the storage <laughs> is kind of walled off. You have to use Mophie's app to access it, right? Right, and I think this was the part that sort of soured me a little bit on it. I mean, it does sound really cool because, you know, your iPhone only has 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes. You can't, I mean, there's no way to really expand on it except if you go, if you go to the cloud. Um, so having this external, basically, storage pack on your phone is really cool, um, except for me, I don't really want to think about the extra storage pack. I want to just just sort of meld and merge together with all my other stuff, right? No, ha no have my 16 gigabytes be a 32 gigabytes, something like that. But no, as you said, um, the the external memory is housed in a separate compartment, and therefore you need to have an app to access that extra housing of memory. And you can't just take a f you, you can't just take photos with your camera, and it would immediately go there. You have to like sort of import it. Or sort of transfer it there, so it's not as seamless as I think I would like it to be, but it's still a nice thing to have, um, especially if you have a juice pack already. So, it's one hundred fifty dollars for the sixteen, hundred eighty dollars for the thirty-two gig. Yeah, available March fourteenth. Yeah. Um, and and Nicole, where where I think you're wrong is when you say you would like it to all be one unified storage. Uh, Apple disagrees with you. You should just <laughs> use the cloud. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. Um, yeah. Mm. So, so you're, we're we're all wrong. When we're we're all wrong, apparently. Now, here's one thing where I I think uh, I think we are going to have some people crying. You're wrong, uh, possibly. This surprised me when I was talking to Nicole about what she wanted to talk about on the show. She mentioned curved TVs. Now, I expected us to have a little like, what's up with curved TVs? Who cares about them? But. <laughs> What what was your impression of curved TVs? You know, I had that exact same reaction when, when all my coworkers were like, you know, curved TVs is a new thing, and I was like, yeah, I mean, do we really need a curved TV? Come on, right? Yeah, it's so gimmicky. Like who? I mean, I mean come on. Even Michael so, Bay can't keep talking. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll still <laughs> shouldn't pick on so, the poor guy. Um, he just had stage fright and a bad prompter. <laughs> I know, totally. Um, so I went and I looked at it myself just to like see. And there's this the Samsung TV. There's a there's, there's a Samsung TV where it's sort of it can be flat and you can press a button and you curve the, the bendable the bendable television set that Samsung has. And so you can see the difference between flat and curved. And the curved is better. Like it is better. Now whether or not it's worth the extra, you know, how well, many hundreds of dollars? Define worth better. Of it. What's better about but, it? I think maybe because you're staring at this like television from however many, however many feet away, you feel as if it's more enclosed. You can sort of see the sides, okay. see the quote-unquote right. sides better. So it gives you a little um, more depth maybe? Is that... See a little bit more depth, like a, like a tiny bit more immersive. I mean, it's one of those things where maybe no, maybe like 10, maybe like 90% of people don't care about it. And granted, I don't think it's worth spending like hundreds of dollars for this thing, but it is better. Like it is... It, you you can you can definitely see it. You can definitely feel it. You, you as if as it from like basically a flat plane to like a curved plane. Um, you feel like you're more in the scene. You feel like you're more, you're in the you're in the, the tour that they're going you um, taking you through. So I don't know. I actually think I actually do think curved is better than flat. Wow that that 
those words, folks. Curved <laughs> is better than flat. Maybe I should make that the title of the show right now. <laughs> Curved is better than flat. You heard it here first. Uh, yeah, you've almost convinced me. I'd have to actually be looking at him myself, I think. But no, but listen, you like make I, a compelling I was, argument. I was just as skeptical. I was I mean gimmicky, but if you actually see it for yourself, it does look better. Like it really does look better. And that's the thing, because the thing you think is, well, they've run out of space. They can't keep making, <laughs> you know, 110 inches, 150 inches. It won't fit I in know, people's houses, right? So they have to do something with the form factor. Let's curve it, but maybe there's something to it. All right. Uh, before we uh, move on to some messages in the calendar, uh, yes. I do want to talk real quickly about Razor Project Christine, yes. which is really interesting. They had a prototype mock-up from Razor. They did this with Project Fiona, which then became yeah. the Razor Edge. So this is the, the project phase of it. It's mm -hmm. modular computing. So it's got yes. a spine with mineral oil cooling and a distributed <laughs> motherboard in that yep. spine. And then you plug in your RAM and your GPU and your Blu-ray. The idea being that through these PCIe 3 uh, dual self-sealing plugs, you'll be able to just like, oh, I need a new graphics card, plop, plop. Uh, and, and they're even talking about maybe there's a subscription model where you just always get the latest hardware sent to you. It's plug and play computer. It's it a plug is, and play yeah. build your own PC. It's like for anyone who's ever been afraid of building your own PC because it's so intimidating and motherboards and CPUs and RAM, this, you just plug it out, plug it in, then, I mean, it's so easy. And I know that's such such a niche thing, I feel. Like, I don't know who's going who's gonna to buy this, but it's cool. Like, it's like a cool thing to sort of plug in, plug in a GPU and get a new one. And it's just as easy as pushing and pulling. It's well, great. Hopefully it's a, it's that, right? The promise of it, I 100% I agree with you. Yeah. But I'm wondering, because here's the thing that tripped me up. I, I'm like, okay, what operating system is this running? And they're like, you can run any operating system. You can run <laughs> Windows. You can run Windows 7. You can run uh, Linux. I'm like, so driver support? You're going to support drivers yeah. for every module you come up with? All, all Razor only. It's Razor only. Yeah, and Razor's the yeah. one making the hardware, so lie. maybe that helps because they can develop yeah. the drivers. But they're yeah. not going to develop drivers for every distribution of Linux out there. <laughs> Obviously, they'll True. develop them for Windows, for the two major Windows True. variants. But even yeah. then, I'm just worried, like, oh, you know how bad it is when you upgrade a graphics card sometimes. Yeah. So the fact so, that I, mean, I don't have to open the is, case you know, doesn't change the driver it's... compatibility issues. True enough, true enough. But I do think the promise, in the, the promise is there, I feel. It's really well, interesting. Yeah, yeah. And maybe because they control all the hardware, the motherboard yeah. and everything else. Those yeah. driver issues won't be as bad. I'll give them, I'll, yeah. I'll give them a pass and, <laughs> until it becomes whatever, you know, the Razor Tower Blade or whatever they call it <laughs> next year. Of course. Uh, look at the uh, calendar real quickly. Today is the last day of CES. Congratulations, you're free. Uh, all <laughs> tech reporters will be free now and be sleeping through the weekend. Uh, <laughs> Facebook-sponsored stories, as we mentioned, will be removed April 9th. You can mark your calendars for that. And hey, coming up this Sunday, January 12th, is the HAL 9000's birthday. HAL became operational on 12th January 1997 in the book. It was 1992 in the movie uh, at the Howl Laboratories in Urbana, Illinois. Go Illini! Um, so he's <laughs> he's got a birthday. How old he is depends on whether you go by the book or the movie. Let's see some messages of the day. Kenji in San Luis Obispo says, you mentioned that sci-fi might not be imaginative enough to envision wearable tech. The reason might be that wearable tech really isn't that exciting or practical. The step beyond a wearable is implantable tech Whoa. Uh, for which sci-fi has a lot of ideas there are ideas about id chips contacts or lens replacements that provide a mini hud heads-up display without needing separate glasses sub very mics and speakers yes totally uh Ooh. things that stay charged using kinetic energy or just a person's own metabolism even direct neural links to computers especially with security concerns i'd be somewhat concerned about implanting computers however this seems more realistic than carrying and remembering numerous wearable devices <laughs> that may or may not be fashionable. You were obviously subsumed with wearable devices. Could you see them becoming <laughs> implantable at a future CES? Um, I don't know if I want like a watch implanted on my wrist per se. Uh, you know what? I can well, see the appeal. I can see the appeal. I can see the appeal of a HUD. Of like, yeah. you know, if you if you wear like regular glasses and a HUD, I can I can definitely see that. You can see stats about what's around you and 
you know, little like weather reports and things like that. I think that's pretty cool. But I, I don't know about like you know implanting in your like body. Yeah, this is going <laughs> to be work. our generation's uh, old man response. I'm not getting anything <laughs> implanted, and the kids are going to be, "What are you talking about? <laughs> that takes two seconds. It's like getting a piercing." <laughs> Uh, Ran right. wrote in and asked me this question. He's like, I enjoy the show, but I might be mistaken. I think the Pebble CEO said the Engadget interview that the new Pebble Steel had double the RAM of the old Pebble. Uh, and I had said yesterday that it had the same internals as the old model. I, I said it wrong, but it does have the same internals. And, and, and here's how this works. Uh, the device is built on the same hardware platform as the original watch, though the Steel has double the 64 kilobits are kilobytes of RAM as the first gen Pebble. And The Verge pointed out it actually has double the storage, uh, eight megabytes, not four megabytes. So I checked with Pebble and Pebble said, the Steel's memory numbers are identical to the latest revision of the original Pebble uh -huh. hardware. So if you buy the non-Steel Pebble today, it is the same internals as the Steel Pebble. But it's double what the, that first gen of it was. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. All right. But thanks, Rand, for uh, writing in and, and helping us because it was not clear if he was right or not. And he was kind of right. Uh, Alan yeah. said, here's a way that sponsored data could, in fact, ac uh, affect access. Let's say a cafe offers free Wi-Fi. Maybe they decide it's more economical to only allow free Wi-Fi to access services that offer sponsored data because their ISP raised the rates so much on the non-sponsored data or lowered their cap that they don't feel like they can subsidize free Wi-Fi for the entire internet. This definitely treads closer to net neutrality issues. Good points, Alan. I think so. That's a, that's a good follow-on effect of that. Uh, also got a couple more here. Roger C. in Silver Spring, Maryland said, I wanted to chime in on Google Plus allowing you to email users through Gmail. By the way, folks, don't forget, as I mentioned yesterday, if you don't want Google Plus people emailing you, go to settings. In fact, I'm going to do it along with you right now. Ooh, in my Gmail, it. click on let's the little it. gear box, select settings. On the general tab that you'll go right into, you'll see email via Google Plus. There's a drop down menu there. Set it to no one. Now, no one on G Google Plus uh, can send me a message even the one time. Anyway, back to Roger's point. Many companies are trying to become the online identity for everyone. They're trying to get people away from memorizing proprietary identifiers and move to a single online identity. Google Plus has a chance to be that identifier. You can already chat, message, follow, and video chat anyone with their G Plus profile. Emailing is the next logical step, followed by calling. While this implementation Ooh. might not be perfect or complete right now, I do like the route they're trying to take. So Roger seems positive about it. Are you bothered by this at all, Nicole? Well, um, it's hard to say. I mean, my 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 email address is already so public that you know, for me, it's like you know, whoever's going to email me is going to email me. But I I do I think it's kind of cool that you can like for example we're we're doing a hangout over Google Plus. Um, yeah. And I can email you, and I can I can. You know, call you on, on I guess a Google Voice number perhaps potentially in the future. Um, it's kind of cool that there's one thing. I also think it's dangerous that it's only one thing, right? I feel that there needs to be there needs to be a backup solution that kind of thing. So well, and it's one thing that's owned by someone else, not you. Yeah, that, exactly. Really not bothered. you. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. Our final message comes from Rich in lovely Cleveland. Hey, Len. Look, do you know Rich? He's from Cleveland. I I should I should know him. <laughs> Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think I do. Yes, you guys I do know. <laughs> I know everybody in Cleveland. Everybody in Cleveland knows it's such a small place. Yeah, everybody it's just a tiny it. little hamlet. <laughs> uh, uh, Rich writes, I think a little more needs to be said on the announcement that the WWE is going streaming. While this is a big risk on their part, if it works, it could radically shift content distribution. I can see a lot of content creators following this example. Think of wrestling fans as just another niche group of fanboys, albeit with a predilection for... <laughs> he's, he <laughs> says some not nice things of <laughs> wrestling fans. Uh, I can see similar networks appealing to other groups of fanboys. Imagine a Doctor Who network with that entire cast
catalog to tantalize fans. I could even see franchises like Star Wars doing something like this, or imagine the Nerdist Network posting monthly comedy specials on top of their other video programming. What gives the WWE an extra hook is using the network as a supplement for pay-per-views. If other franchises want to follow that model, I think they would need a similar kind of hook to keep people subscribed or charge less than $10. For a seemingly regressive business, the WWE is making some pretty forward-thinking moves. Did you get a chance to follow what was going on with that, Nicole? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's really interesting. The $10, was it, was it $10 a $10 month? $10 a month, which, you yeah. know, they normally charge like 45 bucks for, yeah, for a pay-per-view oh. event. So they're banking that somebody's not going to normally pay the pay-per-view fee every month, but if they yeah. can rope them in for $10 a month, they're going to make more money. Absolutely, because it's it's a recurring payment, right? So yeah. it, it makes sense to me. It's an annuity. Great. Yeah. It's a nudity. Exactly. We'll be talking a lot more about this on Cord Killers uh, with Brian Brushwood on Monday for sure. But it is very interesting to see a major sports entity, no matter whether you like them. Imagine, or not. imagine this with like baseball. Yeah, right? I, I can't. I can't. I want to imagine it, <laughs> but I, I just can't see them doing it. But they could. They have been taking know, the steps. But they could. And Major League Baseball Advanced Media, which is an independent company which runs MLB.com and MLB streaming and, and yeah. all of that stuff, they're the ones behind the WWE here. So what? there's a platform what? being built for any league that wants to do this. Yep. yep. All right, we're almost to the end of our show, but we have to check in with Len Peralta to see what Yay. he drew. Uh, we've been kind of watching it through the show, Len. Describe it for us. Well, uh, this is <clears throat> more along the lines of just a, a general CES 2014 image. Um, Try to throw a lot of things that we that you were talking about here. The Oculus Rift, obviously, very very big this year at CES. CES. Um, I drew that little. Let me see if I'm getting even closer here. There's a little Christine, right there. Oh, I thought that was There's a cake. <laughs> It's like a server thing. It's like, you know, wearing, you know. I see, it's got I like, see it now. I see it yeah, now. It's, it's no, got it's, hair because it's Christine. Right? Exactly. And then, uh, you know, over down here, if you come over here, you see um, a very tired Nicole Lee. Oh, she <laughs> <her> sleep. <laughs> trying, to get, trying to get back to normality after a week in Las Vegas. And, of course, oh, I think uh, you had mentioned it during the show, a Michael Bay who's going to wing it, basically saying curved better there you go, folks. I'm done. Is, I'm out. That that is done. I'm out. Exactly. <laughs> that is CES in an eight and a half by eleven black and white drawing. I think it really Beautiful. is. Uh, <laughs> Beautiful. That may be your 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 crowning achievement. In That's the amazing. Thank you. That is, that I hope amazing. I hope it is. <laughs> <laughs> I could well, just if, go to bed and just forget about things. Then. If you're just wondering what it looks like, go to lenperaltastore.com. And if you would like to have it as a memento of this year's CES, by all means, uh, you can you can <laughs> buy it there as well. Thank you, Len. I appreciate that, man. Oh, no problem. Hey, before I let you go, though, I want to mention your Kickstarter because you're doing, is this the third season of Geek a Week? This is the fifth season of Geek fifth a Week. Fifth season. Yes, wow. it's year 5-2, which, which is a, sort of an interesting take on things. I'm, I'm uh, attempting to do another year of 52 new geeks so it's a it's a lot of work um, and uh, it's a long haul I'm in it for the long haul and I will fight for every single dollar that I make on the Kickstarter so if you go to uh, Kickstarter right now search geek week you'll find it year five two please consider donating it'll be awesome and um, that's all I have to say I mean the the uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be great Tom you are a, a, a former geek week I was and, in, in uh, year one. Thank you. Yes, very much. I know you were like one of the early adopters. I uh, and, I was uh, I was honored to be in there. And you know what? I loved the whole Geek a Week thing. The cards, the art, the podcast where you interviewed people. Just an amazing project. Thank you, so thank you. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And Nicole Lee, you too are amazing, uh, especially because oh, you were willing thanks. to do this on the last day of CES. <laughs> I can't thank you enough. <laughs> Obviously, in Gadget.com if you want to find Nicole's work. But anything else you want to let folks know about? Uh, as always, you can go to my Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash Nicole. Um, and uh, just stay tuned for more in Gadget stuff. Twitter.com slash Nicole is apparently the first person I ever followed on Twitter, according to Twitter. Wow, I could I'm swear honored. it was Veronica, but <laughs> I bet it was both of you in succession, <laughs> and I just clicked yours faster or first or something. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But yeah, <laughs> twitter.com slash Nicole. Not knuckle Lee as I accidentally <laughs> knuckle. <laughs> fixed that. That's lovely. 
Apologies Oops. for that. Uh, it's Nicole, N-I-C-O-L-E. Thank you, Nicole. Appreciate yeah. it. Uh, hey, everybody, don't forget, next Thursday and Friday, uh, I will be away. I'll be shooting season two of Sword and Laser's video show, uh, which I planned before I knew I'd be doing this at this time. So I need you to step in. Are you free to host the show? Uh, next Thursday and Friday will be news from you shows. I'll still prop in with a little hello, maybe some late breaking stories, but I want to hear your news reports. What's the tech project you think isn't getting enough attention? Uh, what's the point about, I don't know, about curved TVs that you think we missed today? <laughs> uh, let your voice be heard. Here's how you do it. Record your bit as an audio file. These will be audio only shows. Less than 30 seconds. If it's over 30 seconds, we won't listen to it. And email it to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. If we get it, here's the deadline, 3 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, Thursday morning, we'll consider it for that day's show. Same thing goes for Friday. So you can be the host of the show. Send me your audio file with the subject line, news for you, to daily or to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Also, don't forget about our subreddit at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. You can submit stories, you can vote on other stories, and that's how the news for you section in the regular show is created there. Uh, you can also email us feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com, of course. I will be back on Monday, though, with CNET's Ayaz Akhtar as Yay. my guest. Weird. Nicole Lee from CNET is now Nicole Lee from Engadget, and Ayaz Akhtar from PC Mag and Twit is now Ayaz Akhtar from CNET. It's just it's a crazy world. Dogs doing. and cats living together. Mass hysteria. <laughs> we'll see you Monday. <laughs> and that's it. Nice. Um, Yay. I met um, Ayaz yesterday. We caught up. It was great to see him. Oh, you did? You I'm, saw him at CES. Cool. Yeah, I saw him at CES. He's, so he's, he's, he's working hard. Well. Good. He's working hard. Working hard. He's Great. doing that front page, the front door, as they call it. Which is uh, what you used to do, right? Yeah, it's what Way Molly and I when? did, like back in yeah. 2004. <laughs> Crazy times. Uh, how things have changed. I know, I know. Mm. All right, All folks. Right, well, I will, uh, I'm going to stop the broadcast now, but thanks okay. for watching right. and listening. We'll see you later. Awesome. Take care. All right, bye. Thank you.